Hey guys, Matt here, and uh, I'm trying to get my ass in gear and do some more videos. So uh, I thought I'd do like a new series on how I configure antivirus for the real world or anti-malware or security suite, however you want to call it. Um, I get emails and messages every day still asking me what's my favorite free antivirus well I don't like to say I have a favorite or uh, what's the best or anything like that uh, because things the world uh, can turn on a dime so to speak uh, any day you know you may have um, a security solution that's awesome and then they release an update that basically makes your computer just completely corrupted so you just never know so right now what I'm using um, for clients who do not want to buy antivirus is Avast and people ask me why well I say for me it's easy to install as a tech um, easy for me to register if there is any kind of registering like involved and I never get calls back from clients asking me what does this mean what does this mean what does this mean and I'm infected again and all that other stuff it just rarely ever happens so um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I install it vast like from scratch so I usually go to file hippo file hippo dot com and uh, if you look over in popular software you should see a vast net list if you don't see it over there you're gonna see it under here and uh, File Hippo is pretty much updated constantly with like the latest revision. Um, sometimes they'll have betas, sometimes they'll just have final versions of software. So we'll go ahead and download the latest version. We're using Windows 8 here. And we'll go ahead and save it. And again, yeah, this video is just for you know people curious. They may want to install Vast on their actual working PC, and this is how I normally do it. I will question the client and find out what kind of things they do on the internet before I install Vast. But today, I'm going to show you the most typical way I configure it. So, and while that's downloading, um, I'll just pause it really quick. Okay, so I'll go ahead and resume here, and um, it's downloaded. We'll go ahead and hit run. So currently, uh, Vast is at 8.0. That's the official like release out there. Well, 8.0. Whatever. and it always starts up like this depends on um, your machine sometimes it's faster and slower of course but I'm in a virtual machine right now um, they it uh, this is the first screen you'll see um, it's asking you if you want to install uh, Google Chrome and uh, make it your default browser and if you want to install the Google Toolbar for Internet Explorer, um, Chrome is an awesome browser and still one I use full time. I would suggest that you do install it if you if you want to. But right now, I'm just going to say uh, not right now. So I'll do uh, right here a custom install. A lot of people will just bang automatically click in, uh, in Express install, and they may not need all the different shields that Avast offers. So we'll do a custom install. Uh, you can give it a path. You know, you can install it on maybe your SSD or some other drive if you want. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And right here, we'll go ahead and hit custom. And typically, after I question a client, I will usually deselect all these guys, and I will deselect IM, P2P, and mail, uh, leaving the rest checked. Um, a lot of times, most of my clients are older and they're not doing IM, they're not doing P2P, and their mail is not on their PC. They're actually, you know, doing web mail or doing it through their phone or something like that. So, uh, let's go ahead and hit next. And next. 
And next. And Avast is going to go ahead and install right now. All right, so we're done with the install uh, part. We're going to go ahead and uh, click next. Setup is finished. Nice little smiley face. And I will say that, yeah, it, it does put a bit of a load on the system. If, if you're trying to install this on a PC with a processor more than, I don't know, four or five years old, I, it's going to slow it down a little, a little tidbit. But that's like with any antivirus, though. It's a necessary evil. And it's only a part of the puzzle, basically. All right, so you have uh, Welcome to Avast. So immediately I'll just go ahead and double click it. And let's go through a few things that I check normally. I'm gonna make sure I get everything. The first thing I do is I register. Uh, someone who's installed this may not know what the hell this means. Uh, not registered yet, 30 days remaining. Go ahead and register. Uh, all they want is an email address you're going to choose this option right here unless you want to pay for um, you know some other option that has a few more features that you may or may not use I'll just go ahead and put in my first name last name and then uh, my email address for one of my accounts and then we'll hit register with email address I don't know why they make you register. They, as far as I know, they really barely send you any mail at all, so that's kind of wild. All right, all registered up. We'll go ahead and say uh, stay with basic protection for now. And now I configure it uh, to make things easy for me and easy on the client. Uh, I don't want to get any phone calls, you know, on a Saturday asking me what this means, what this means, all this other stuff. One thing that freaks people out are the sounds. A vast talks to you constantly. Turn off the sounds. Uh, I don't see any reason for them to have that in there. Sometimes people want to know about it, but not me. Um, I turn off all the pop-ups. It's not a, not a big deal. Let's see what else I do. I always do an automatic program update. Uh, it really doesn't go on much beyond here. Uh, I'll click OK. Under security, I click file system, click settings, and in here I always get lost because I just started doing this. Sometimes I'll turn off the auto sandbox depending on what my client's up to. Uh, most of the time I just leave it on. Um, let's see. Under PUP, potentially unwanted programs. Uh, I don't know if it's in here or not, actually. Always remove the whole archive. Hang on. See, this build is a little bit different, so maybe that's already set up. Scan when opening, scan all files. Don't modify anything in there. Actions. Sensitivity, looking through all these. Oh, there it is. It's under sensitivity. I, I totally forgot. So under sensitivity, um, I like to scan for pops and uh, suspicious files. So scan for potentially unwanted programs. That means like adware. And I'll check that and hit OK. I always get lost there for some reason. I don't know why. It would be nice if uh, they put it all in the same kind of spot. Um... And really, that's all I do for this. Um, after that, 
it basically just sits there and runs down there. You do get these kind of annoying pop-ups. I'm not thrilled about that, but I get it. They gotta make some dough. Um, so anyway, quick little video on how I configure a vast free for most of my clients. Not all, but most. Um, and uh, I don't know. I guess I'll do some more of these. I don't know. I'm trying to make as many different little series as I can. So, oh well. Back to the drawing board. See ya.